All right, we're just about to start to ride on the Multistrada V4 Rally. We're here in uh, Durango, and we're headed up to Array, and then over to Telluride today. It's gonna be a first class, phenomenal ride. So really looking forward to this. All right, very early first impressions of the Multistrada V4 Rally. So we'll cover this in another segment of the video, but there's a lot of changes. They didn't just take the Multistrada V4 and add a larger fuel tank. They did a lot more than that. The suspension is different. The motor's actually a little bit different. It's got that enhanced cylinder deactivation to reduce heat and improve fuel economy. Uh, you do have this huge 30 liter or eight gallon fuel tank. You've got a bigger, wider, taller windshield, different winglets here. They've changed the electronics. Uh, they've added some more features. You've got lighter weight wheels, seven pounds less on the wheels. Uh, it's still using the basic Gran Turismo V4 engine, but this is the engine from the Diavel, uh, not from the uh, other Multistrada V4, so it's slightly different. Um, and you add up all these changes. It's also a taller bike, the suspension is taller. Everything added up means that you have, you have a bike that really uh, feels greater than the sum of its parts. It definitely feels like a different motorcycle than the standard Multistrada V4S, it, quite a bit different. It does feel a little heavier, it does feel a little taller because it is, it just feels more substantial, more like a bike I wanna jump on and ride across the country at high speeds. Uh, if I'm being honest, I think it's a little interesting that they chose to you know, make their off-road version also bigger and heavier. I do think I have some disagreement with that overall theory. I get what they're doing. They're going after the BMW GS Adventure crowd, um, and the features of the bike are nice, but if I'm looking to do more off-roading, I want less weight and less bulk, not more weight and more size and more height and all of that. Um, but that being said, uh, I would buy this over the standard V4 just because of all the added features you're getting for a few thousand more dollars. I mean, frankly, if you're already spending $27,000, why not spend $30,000 and, you know, a couple more bucks on your payment or whatever and get this with all these, with all these cool features. <laughs> so it's still the same phenomenal V4 engine uh, that we got used to with uh, with the other Multistrada and, and some of Ducati's other bikes. The engine makes power everywhere, it makes 170 horsepower, uh, 90 foot-pounds of torque. The engine is an absolute phenomenon on two wheels. And you have really long you have really long service intervals, that 36,000 mile or 38,000 mile valve inspection interval, no more Desmo on this engine, so I really appreciate that. They've added some other things. You've got a phone holder thing, which in other, my other reviews on other bikes, I've said I don't really like those things, but we'll try this one out. You've got a USB port in there. It's waterproof. We'll see if it fits my bigger phone. Um, so far, I just feel, I feel like this is the globe trotting bike. Like this is not a hardcore off-road bike. This is more of that ultra luxury, ultra high speed touring with some dirt roads so that you get the added versatility. Um, you know, so I think that that, no, no, there goes the group. <laughs> I think if there's ever been a motorcycle that 
should get the grand touring or grand sports luxury touring or I don't know whatever you want to call it to get that metal this is the bike right here oh my god I just I wish you guys could experience what I'm experiencing riding these roads on this motorcycle it's the perfect combination I mean Ducati is so smart uh, to do it this way have the CEO lead us on a ride on probably the company's best motorcycle one of the world's best touring motorcycles on some of the world's best roads of course we're gonna feel good about everything but the truth is objectively as a motorcycle even considering the price uh, this truly is one of the highest performing nicest riding motorcycles you can buy uh, today in 2023 uh, the engine has a feeling of almost unlimited power and it sounds good and it's fun to ride the bike is phenomenally comfortable it handles like a scalpel it can go off-road it's got every safety technology and rider aid technology that you could ever ask for the suspension is reacting a thousand times a second to the road it's got linked brakes it's got some of the biggest brake rotors you can get 330 millimeters it's got an adjustable windshield it's got adaptive cruise control it's got the blind spot if you want the best just get this bike and just be over just be done this is it I mean, going 100 miles an hour on this bike, like, I can put my visor up. That's how good this is. Look, 100 miles an hour with my visor up. So if you have any questions about the aerodynamics and the windshield and stuff, 100 miles an hour riding with my visor up, of course, you got to protect your eyes. But seriously, I mean, it's just, it's phenomenal what they've done here. We should talk a little bit more about some of the technology now that I'm kind of off my little adrenaline rush there. Um, the suspension, so it's fully active, fully dynamic suspension. It's sensing what's going on with the road and adjusting like a million times a second or whatever, whatever it is. Um, the suspension also has some cool tricks in terms of the preload. So what it does is, um, let's see, where's my hazard lights? I don't know. So it doesn't, it has um, a minimum preload setting. What you have to do is hold down the suspension button. And if you're under 70 miles an hour, then when you come to a stop, well, no, it's actually as you're riding, it lowers, it takes all the preload out of the back so that when you come to a stop, it's easier to get your foot down. I think it's like an inch or something like that, maybe. Um, I think they're doing taking some video up here or something so anyway but look at the scenery it's just phenomenal so this is highway 550 between uh, Durango and Silverton Colorado also known as a million dollar highway uh, one of the best pieces of road in the entire uh, United States so getting back to the suspension yeah the minimum preload it, it it's not I, I don't know quite why they didn't make it fully automatic you have to hold down that button and then it lowers the preload but if you go above 70 miles an hour it resets back to normal height um, so you have to do it every time if you want that feature I, I don't really get that I think it should have been like the Harley Davidson system where every time you come to a stop it just does that for you the other thing it has is something called easy lift and what that does is when the bikes at a stop um, when you go to pick it up off the side stand there's it takes all the compression damping out of the suspension so it's easier to lift it off the side stand it is noticeable it does work other technology the blind spot monitoring works well the adaptive cruise control works amazingly well um, the linked brakes so when you're on the front brake hard it gives you a little bit of rear brake to balance and steady out the motorcycle so i like that but basically everything you can get on a, in modern motorcycle technology this bike has it this is like the mercedes s class of motorcycles it, it just has everything and the thing is with ducati like they test their stuff it's not a half-baked thing like you might get sometimes with ktm sorry ktm but that's true they, they really they develop and test it really well and they don't release stuff that's really like half-baked um i guess the only things that i would change about this bike if you could change anything would be make the engine a little smoother at low rpm and also somehow give it a shaft drive. I know the shaft drive would take some of the power and it would be heavier, but on a long distance touring motorcycle, shaft drive would be nice. 
Uh, so, yeah, yeah. But other than that, I, I don't see how you could improve on this motorcycle at all. I mean, guys, look at the scenery. Like, what a privilege to be able to be here right now at this time of year. The road's open. There's no ice and snow on the road. Oh, my God. Like, that is one of the most beautiful scenes I've I've ever seen on a motorcycle ride. It's just phenomenal. I mean, and behind me, too. I don't know if you can see it on the cameras, but it's just sensational scenery up here on the Million Dollar Highway. Right now that we've been riding for a couple hours, uh, it, it, I have some more thoughts. I mean, it's hard to find anything negative about this bike other than a couple things I've already mentioned. It just, it has everything. Like the bike does everything well and it just never puts a foot wrong. And the, the electronics and the safety systems are always there. The suspension is amazing, even though it's long travel, it still works really well for the sport touring riding. The high speed stability, I mean, we're regularly, you know, up around 100 miles an hour in some parts, going through some of these sweeping corners at 70, 80 plus miles an hour. And it's just, it never does anything unexpected. And the motor has power, everything above 3,500 RPM, the motor just has such linear, strong power. And we're at 10,000 10, feet above sea level, two miles above sea level. And this bike still accelerates like it's like warp drive in Star Trek, you know. What an absolutely sensational ride! The CEO of Ducati North America holding a great pace on these roads. Great group of riders. Some of the best, you know, one of the best motorcycles in the world to be doing this on. <laughs> Keeping that good form all the way through the ADV bike. So they're at my own. I was trying like toes in. It's like you're touching the dragon. You're great. Oh no, shit. Yeah. Sport might be a little bit more. Like if you go to sport. Yeah. Let's see what sport is real quick. I know it's throwing all over. Dusty, how's it treating you so far? Not bad, man. Can't complain. Yeah. Pretty badass bike. It's fast. It's fast. <laughs> yeah. It's good. How is it as a passenger on this? It's pretty good. It's pretty good? Yeah. Is it comfortable? Yeah, super okay. comfortable. This seat and the position the posture is super good too. How does it feel for you with her on the back? Do you notice her on the back much with this bike? Yeah, she doesn't really weigh much. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, actually that's one thing that's interesting is going between the uh, suspension modes. There's the auto leveling and then there's the ones that like you can choose your you know, passenger, passenger with luggage, all that. I did notice the auto leveling, the bike feels different in different spots, different situations. So I'm super curious about that. I want to try like a locked out level. Yeah. And obviously having a passenger and a little bit of luggage on there, the auto leveling is dealing with more things. So you do notice some difference. It's real subtle though. It's not like yeah. super distinct. And you only notice it when you start getting super well, aggressive. Roll of right. 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 <laughs> right. I was like, Holy shit.
All right, we're on one of the most uh, most beautiful parts of the road here. I think I rode this last year when we did the Colorado BDR. I remember this segment. It's just phenomenally beautiful. This this whole section is. Um, so I've been thinking a little bit about uh, the engine heat. So it's a V4 engine, and the rear two cylinders you kind of sit right on top of them, and your legs are really close to the two rear cylinders. These modern powerful engines they put out a lot of engine heat, and you do feel. What I notice is like from my knees down like through my calves, like I just feel a general sense of being warm. We're riding in cool weather, so it doesn't feel like I'm overheating or anything, but you do notice it. Now Ducati is doing a lot to try to manage that. They have the cylinder deactivation, which on this model, as opposed to the regular V4 Multistrada, actually works when you're riding as well. So if you're riding below 4,500 RPM, uh, and you're not on the throttle or you're just on a little bit of throttle the rear cylinders shut off spark and fuel and so it cools things down and also you get a little bit better fuel economy and lower emissions so they're getting emissions fuel economy and uh, less engine heat by doing that the other thing they're doing is they have these adjustable louvers you can actually open and close these little uh, vents these kind of air scoops down by your legs uh, and when you open those up it kind of directs more air up towards your leg area and I think helps help keep it cool so they're 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 doing things to address it but the engine heat is still there uh, it's just gonna depend on the climate you ride and if you do a lot of low speed riding in hot climate it might be more of an issue for you but if you're touring at higher speeds or you're riding in you know more mild weather I don't think it's gonna be much much of an issue for you all right so this adaptive cruise control I've been playing around with it I used it on the last Multistrada I tested um, I know this is kind of a new feature for motorcycles and a lot of you aren't going to be experienced with it which makes sense because hardly anything has it and you might be thinking well I don't think I really need that or that's unnecessary it's not necessary of course but it is a luxury feature that's really really nice to have so I've got the cruise set of 75 I can change my following distance right here so one bar is closest to the bike in front of me so this is the close following distance but you can see I'm not controlling the throttle or the brakes the motorcycle can have complete autonomous control of the throttle and see how it's braking there it did all that braking without me doing anything I'm not touching the brakes it's keeping the distance from the bike in front of me so for a group ride <laughs> for a group ride like this it's really good it's really designed to follow traffic, of course, uh, and things like that on a freeway, but it also detects motorcycles really, really well. This is one of the, our camera guys on the Desert X. So it's, it's a great feature to have, and it really uh, can, it's amazing how well the bike controls itself. It's a little bit weird at first to let the bike do braking and throttle for you, but I'm telling you guys, it works like a charm. Now, in an emergency situation, something like a crazy fast stop or crazy hard acceleration is probably not going to be able to do that, and they have disclaimers saying, you know, you shouldn't really be doing that. Um, but I've found it to just be an incredible system, and it, and it saves so much energy over the course of a long day of touring because you're you know in and out of traffic behind other bikes cars trucks whatever you just set the speed you want to go and let the bike sort out uh, the distance the pacing and you can just sit back and and uh, really relax and enjoy the ride this is why I go riding in the American West right here I mean sport touring and touring through this landscape you know you smell the grass you feel the raindrops you feel the air temperature. I mean, look at the snow-capped mountains. Look at the clouds, the thunderstorms in the sky, the huge horizon that goes forever, the valleys, the jagged mountain peaks. It's so spiritual and so beautiful to be here. I just feel so privileged to be able to see something like that and pass through this kind of landscape on two wheels. It's 
it's really amazing and you just have to experience it to understand what I'm saying that's really one of the most beautiful views I've seen in years right there So I've been riding on some gravel roads now. It's an amazing gravel road uh, bike for covering a lot of miles on gravel. You know, the suspension is really compliant. You definitely notice the difference between this and the standard V4 Multistrada. You can feel you have that extra travel making things more plush. So it gives a really smooth, really controlled ride. And of course on roads like this, the extra weight and size is not really a problem because this is not technical off-road riding. Um, and then the electronics package is really, really good on this bike. So I put it in enduro mode and it turned off my rear wheel ABS. I dialed back my traction control. Of course, you can adjust everything however you want, um, but it works really well just in that enduro mode. But it's very easy to get going 70, 80 plus miles an hour on dirt because this bike is really quite composed. The suspension works very well. This is a beautiful stretch of the ride here. Kind of dropped down into this valley, a lot of like gravel switchbacks. It was kind of uh, interesting coming down that and then we're riding along next to this, next to this beautiful river here. Just absolutely gorgeous Colorado scenery. So we just had a great ride on the dirt section, the gravel section. It was really dusty, but still a lot of fun. Of course, Colorado continues to impress. Look at this, I've got this river behind us here. What, what an amazing day. The sky's beautiful, just a tiny bit of rain, but, but not really enough to get wet. Really beautiful stuff. All right, good morning on day two of the Multistrada V4 Rally press launch here in beautiful southwestern Colorado. I'm just looking at the mountains here outside of the hotel. We stayed in a five-star resort, so Ducati treats us very well. And then uh, let me flip this around and show you what's behind me. I mean, that's literally the view from the hotel right there. Like, isn't that phenomenal? I mean, what an amazing state to be riding motorcycles in. So today we're gonna be riding uh, up over Last Dollar Pass, uh, over to the Dallas Divide, then down by Blue Mesa Lake, uh, over through Lake City, and then the highlight of this whole event, I think, is riding up over Cinnamon Pass, down into Animus Forks, and then back to Silverton. So it's gonna be a pretty adventurous day, pretty good test. Uh, some pretty good off-roading for such a big bike, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, yeah, looking forward to it. Well, good morning from day two. We're just leaving uh, the community of Telluride or the little village of, what do they call it? Mountain Telluride Village or something, the ski resorts. But look at the, look at the mountains. Look at the scenery out in front of us. I mean, good Lord, this is just like, <sighs> I don't know. I, I'm just overwhelmed by the beauty of this place every time I look around. Seems even prettier this morning, I guess, with maybe the air is kind of settled or it's more clear or something, but what an absolutely gorgeous part of the world to be riding in. I feel so privileged. So today we're really going to get to 
a really good off-road test of the V4 Rally. You know, I've seen some comments that, well, you know, most people aren't going to really take this bike off-road. And that may be true, but the truth is they did engineer the capability into the bike. Look at how many people take their GSs and GSAs off-road and really do quite well. Um, there's no difference here. This bike is extremely capable if you choose to do off-roading with it. Um, you do have to respect it. It is big and heavy and powerful. You have to know how to use the electronics. You have to, you know, be comfortable with big adventure bikes and maybe take some training. But if you do all that, it's really an amazingly capable machine. The suspension, I would say the suspension on this bike is better than the BMW GS for sure. So we're starting our uh, trek over Last Dollar Road or Last Dollar Pass here outside of Telluride. Look at the look at the area we're riding through. It's going to be really really pretty. So this road's kind of nice. It's like a treated dirt or gravel road where it's not dusty. So I don't know if they put like some sort of oil or coating on it just to keep the dust down, but it works really really well. Sometimes there'll be like a little patch of mud and you just have to watch out for stuff like that so you don't, you know, start sliding around on a 600 pound bike. So the hill hold assist on this bike is extremely useful. You squeeze the brake lever in and on a steep hill like this, then it just puts the brakes on and you can let go of the brake. I've got the bike in first gear because we're about to go. Um, but you see this little H comes up and then it just holds the bike where you are. And then when you want to take off, you just, you just go. That's a great feature. The, some other bikes have it too. Quite a few adventure bikes have it now. It's actually surprisingly useful. In terms of standing up and riding the Multistrada, uh, the bars are in a good position. I would just rotate these forward a little bit if it was my own bike. Um, yeah, the Ergos are good for standing and you can do this all day. The one thing I would change if it was my bike, the foot pegs, I could use a little bit more support on the foot pegs, just a little bit larger. That's true of almost every uh, adventure, dual sport bike, you always end up changing out the pegs. These stock pegs have a rubber thing that just pulls right out, so for street you can have the rubber in. I prefer to just take the rubbers out all the time because uh, this morning I had to, I had forgotten, left them in, and I slipped off the foot peg when I was standing up on the bike like this. All of a sudden my foot just slipped off because we went through a puddle and it was, uh, could have caused a crash there. So yeah, foot pegs, but I mean, man, you put the windshield down. The other thing I haven't talked about on this bike, I guess, is it's so easy to put the windshield up and down. This little mechanism is so fast and easy to use. Off-road, it's nice to push it down. So when you're kind of up over the front end, being a little more aggressive, you don't have the windshield in your face, but then on the highway, you can pull that baby up and get really good wind protection. So it's just like, you know, they, for this price level, you're getting a lot, you're getting a lot of content and some really good engineering, you know, and, and you should, frankly, for what this bike costs, but I think it delivers on that. We had lunch and uh, rode out the rainstorm, the hailstorm. Then we were getting on our bikes, it started pouring again. And then anyway, it's just the weather in Colorado is crazy. It just changes every few minutes. Uh, so we're headed to down towards Lake City on these gravel roads. And then at Lake City, we'll pick up the road that go goes up over Cinnamon Pass, which is the most challenging part of these two days of riding in, in terms of the off-road terrain. So it'll be pretty interesting with this big of a group on all these big bikes. But from what I've seen, everybody in this group is like a, you know, professional type rider. They don't seem to have any issues with anything. So I'm probably the least capable rider in this whole group, if I'm being honest. Um, so that kind of tells you the level that this group is at. But, you know, in terms of the motorcycle, I mean, you know, just like everything I've said before, it, it's really hard to find much fault with it. Uh, we were talking about this at lunch. I was talking with Jason, the CEO of Ducati. You know, he has a Desert X at, at, at home. It's one of his personal bikes. And he was like, yeah, if you're, if you're doing a lot of more off-road and you're not doing tons of highway, then the Desert X is the one you want. Um, you know, or any of those mid-sized bikes. But he's like, you know, if I 
got to hang out in the highway for very long or do do the twisty roads and he really liked to have the power and the comfort of the Multistrada, especially at those higher speeds where the wind protection really is a huge factor there so pretty interesting to talk to the CEO of Ducati about this stuff well I got stuck in the mud this is just really snotty mud here Look at the tire! Nothing but traction, baby. We did this, uh, we did this adventure rally in Dennis a couple years ago. We had R19s with the tires. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 Look at that! Yeah, I got the front tire so hard. <laughs> well, we got bikes stuck over there. We got, these guys got up here. Look at the, my bike. Yeah, has no traction at all. We got everybody through that clay mud and now we're negotiating a bunch of mud and rocks getting off the mountain here. It's still slippery but it's not the clay so you can survive it. I think the thing with these huge big bikes is that like in these rocks and stuff just kind of stand up get your body position right and just roll through it. You know I'm at the top of first gear 20 miles an hour seems to work well. The Multitrata suspension is really compliant so it absorbs the rocks really well uh, if you try to ride too fast you're going to bottom it out and slam into things so you just have to watch your pace on a motorcycle like this but you know it wasn't it wasn't too many years ago if you said oh yeah we're going to go ride a bunch of ducatis off road people would have looked at you kind of funny but they sure have changed as a company to getting into all this off-road stuff and I think it's great, you know. It's a true adventure now. It's raining, it's hailing, the road's getting slick. Can't see crap because my glasses are getting water on them and my visor is all watery. But we're just trying to get out of here at this point, but this weather is pretty brutal. It's just as hard to see the trail, like if you're going to hit a rock or a rut, because the weather really impacts your vision, you know. Well, we're climbing Cinnamon Pass now. We're getting into the rockier stuff. You can see where we're going up there. It almost seems impossible that we would get that high, but we do. Actually, uh, Cinnamon Pass, I rode this last year. Uh, we came down it, if you watch my Colorado BDR film. And of course, now we're stopping. Oh, I think somebody dropped their bike or something like that. What I was saying was, yeah, we rode down this last year on the 890s. There's some switchbacks and things like that, but it's, uh, it's not too bad.
All right, situation report. Uh, we're about halfway up Cinnamon Pass, maybe more. Um, just getting into the rockier stuff. You can see there's a nice water crossing here behind me. We stopped here, but then uh, Jason heard on the radio that uh, <coughs> Ryan uh, in the group uh, got some kind of injury back there. So we've got to get the recovery truck, the support truck, over the pass and then to get him in the truck because he can't ride to get his bike in the truck. So now we've lost two bikes today, um, but only one injury, only one injured rider. And we're doing some pretty serious riding for these big bikes. So I'm, I'm really impressed of, with Ducati's, you know, sort of ambition here of doing this, but it's great. I think, you know, the bike is amazing actually on these kinds of roads. It's actually very good. I was talking to Dusty from West 38 Moto and we both agree it's a lot better than a, G, a 1250 GS off-road. So uh, that's saying something. So anyway, let's uh, get back on the bike soon, I hope. Okay, well, things are getting pretty testy now. We've got the rocks, steep hills, switchbacks. There's a marmot. Ooh, this is testy. This is testy right here. Get the way the hell to the outside on the switchback. Slip the clutch. Oh yeah, no problem. No problem. Look where you want to go. Starting to get into the snow fields now. It's beautiful up here. But man, you really got to pay attention to what you're doing. It's uh, slick because the wet rocks are a little bit slippery. And quite honestly, these tires kind of suck for off-road. They're not, they're not very good off-road tires. They're great road tires though. You've got to cover the clutch. See, I had to dab there. I don't really want to ride on the outside line because then I'm too close to the cliff. See, this is what you don't want to do. <laughs> I shouldn't have stopped. <laughs> yeah, momentum's king on huh? Well, I was, I thought I was going to run into him. Can I go ahead? Yeah. Well, this is exciting. See, I used up a lot of energy getting stuck there. That's a mistake, you know, I should have kept going. I thought I was going to hit Jason because he was going really slow. So I was like, oh, I'll stop and wait. But then I couldn't get going again on the slick rocks. If you maintain momentum, you'll be fine. But then when you get stuck, man, it takes so much energy because we're at like 11,000 feet above sea level, you know. Nice switch back here. 
I wish these guys would just ride a little faster. I feel like I'm gonna stall out. I find it harder to ride in a group than by myself, to be honest. This is testy, all right. Go wide, slip the clutch, look through the corner. Fall into the shoe dry, there we go. Now I'm riding in the river. <laughs> okay. Get your momentum back. Oh, another switchback, okay. These guys are... Whew. Catch my breath here. Okay, go. See, I'm being a little sloppy. Switchbacks are fun on a 600 pound bike. Oh, that's sketchy as hell. So when Ducati said they were gonna take us on an adventure ride, this isn't really what I had in mind. I thought adventure might be that they were out of milk so you couldn't have a cappuccino and you have to have an espresso. I thought that was what they meant by adventure being Italian. You just gotta trust the bike and just go for it. I'm just leaving it in first gear. And now it's starting to rain, that's great. <sighs> Just have to, I have to remember to breathe. <sighs> I think that's the chase truck up there. There's that hill hold assist feature again, really handy. So you can see here, you don't want to get on that left side because you'll just go fall down into the crevasse. So you got to stay up on the right. And then there's the snow drifts that kind of go over the top of the road. So that's interesting. I 
I just clipped the snow drift with my mirror. <laughs> I think we're almost to the top of uh, Cinnamon Pass. Which is good because we're all getting a bit tired at this point. It's already like six o'clock. So we should be at the hotel eating dinner, but obviously we're still about an hour, one to two hours from the hotel. A good thing is this time of year, uh, it stays light until like nine o'clock. So we don't have to worry about that. That's slippery. So the tendency is to follow the line of the rider in front of you, but they may always, not always pick good lines, so that's kind of a catch-22. Oh my god, yes. So good. Now it's just mostly downhill after this. Woo-wee! Cinnamon Pass, right there. No signal. <laughs> uh, I, I got signal here last time, but no signal. Yeah. I think my GoPro's dying, it's too cold or something. But man, look at that view, that's just epic. Just absolutely epic. So we're just going down the uh, west side of Cinnamon Pass now. I'm just tired, so I'm just sitting down and smashing through the terrain. I don't even care. I'm just tired at this point, so I'll sit down unless I really need to stand up. I'm so impressed with this Multistrada. I've ridden, you know, all the big adventure bikes except for the KTM 1290. And this is... This is so good off-road. It's so much more confidence-inspiring than a 1250GS, mostly because I think of the suspension arrangement. It's just much better. I keep hearing something rattling and banging. I don't know if it's the center stand. It's probably the my panniers or something. My panniers banging around, but it's just a lot of stuff rattling. That is about one of the most epic things I've ever seen. And the fact that it's snowing, lightly snowing, of course, adds to the adds to the drama. So I'm riding behind uh, Jason. He's a uh, North American uh, Ducati CEO, pretty amazing guy, great rider, great guy to hang out with. So one criticism I do have while I eat my Cliff Bar here is, you know, this is tall and heavy and it's fairly top heavy. I mean, not not in a relative sense, like all these adventure bikes are kind of top heavy, except 890. But like if you stop an off camber and you start to get tipped at all, the bike just wants to tip over. It's so heavy and kind of unwieldy for that. When I got stopped on some of those hills or stuck and you're trying to get going on the bike once, it just if it gets leaned at all, it just falls. Like it's 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 too much weight really to be doing this, but it can do it. It's just, you really got to plan your every move very carefully. I'd much, you know, much rather be on a, on a lighter weight motorcycle, obviously. But that being said, this thing performs really well. Just be careful where you stop. I probably should have got the low seat. So I don't know if I've commented on this yet, uh, but the quick shifter, I've been using the quick shifter pretty much exclusively these whole two days. And it's probably the best 
quick shifter on any motorcycle that I've ever used. It just, it always works perfectly. At any RPM in any situation, that quick shifter is so smooth. Um, so the only time I really use the clutch is, you know, get starting off from a stop. Uh, so they really certainly got that part right. Well, they got most everything right, honestly. So we're about, we're heading back into, well not back, we're arriving to Silverton where we're staying tonight and then I get on a plane at 7 in the morning in Durango so I have to get up at like 4 a.m. I think. Oh man, I'm going to be tired tomorrow. But uh, this is just a sensational motorcycle. I mean, there's no other way to say it. Like, everything is so dialed in on this bike. Um, the only negatives were... A little bit of wind buffeting even with the windshield high up like that um, a little bit of engine heat you know you feel your legs get kind of warm oh uh, what else um, chain drive we talked about that shaft drive would be lower maintenance but it would add weight and I don't think Ducati's ever gonna do that uh, what were the other downsides? Uh, the cost, right? Um, it's a little bit heavy. We talked about that. A little bit tip, top heavy and tippy. So I don't really agree with the idea of making the off-road version like heavier and taller. Like that's not really the right approach, honestly, if you look from a high level point of view. The bike does work, but like if you want to do a lot of off-road, you just get a Desert X really, I guess. Would I buy this over the regular V4S? Uh, yeah, I would, because I like the extra fuel range, wind protection, better suspension, more features. It's not that much more money, and yeah, I like it. I like it better than the standard Multistrada V4 for sure, but that's just me. It may not be right for you.